So let me start off this video with this. Are you a Titan? How many times have you died trying to put your barricade up? Probably more times than you want to admit. Maybe you're at the point to where it infuriates you when you die right when your wall goes up. Or maybe when your wall goes up and you die right at that very moment. Well, today we're going to take a look at a survival build. And not only a survival build, a survival titan build. Alongside that, we're going to be looking at an anti-meta loadout. One of my favorite anti-meta loadouts. Welcome to episode one of a new mini-series for this season. Where I find low-key non-meta builds or loadouts and see how they fare up in the crucible and how to get the most out of them if you want to see more videos like this then do me a huge favor drop a like on the video and comment down below and let me know what your favorite subclass you'd like to see showcased here so how are we going to start this build off well first keep in mind that a titan barricade is now tied to a titan's resilience so we're going to try our best to max the titan resilience out to 10 which is going to allow us to bring our cooldown to 14 seconds. So what exotic armor piece is going to bring the survivability up to another level? That exotic armor piece is going to be none other than the Crest of Alpha Lupi. Now, for those who don't know, or maybe you forgot what this exotic does, this chest piece generates an additional orb of light on super activation and adds a healing pulse when your barricade is activated. Now, let's take this to another level. And one word, Void Battery. Yes, Void Battery will double your barricade cooldown to 30 seconds, which, in my opinion, I didn't notice at all. I didn't notice the 30 second cooldown. It felt like it was faster. So this is going to automatically make us run a Void subclass. Now, for all three trees, which tree will we be getting the most bang for our buck? Which Void subclass will we be using? And that tree is going to be Code of the Protector. So Defensive Strike. Defeat an enemy with a melee ability to create an overshield around you and nearby allies. Final blows grant melee energy when the overshield is active. That is going to be defensive strike of Code of the Protector. Moving on over to Rallying Force. Melee kills restore health for you and nearby allies. Next, moving on to Ward of Dawn. When super energy is full, create an indestructible dome to protect you and your allies. Passing to the Ward of Dawn grants you and your allies temporary increased weapon damage. And lastly, from Turn the Tide, your overshield from Defensive Strike lasts longer and increase melee damage and reload speed. So, how does this all tie together? How is this all going to be bundled up into a survivability Titan build? Well, see it like this. When it seems like you're about to die, you pop a barricade and you stay alive. You have Void Battery giving you the overshield. Now you have the Crest giving you that little health bump. Next... You're going to have that tight, that hunter, that slimy hunter who wants to hop over your wall. Why? Because they see that you're one shot. Once you pop your shield, void battery kicks in. Boom, gives you a little overshield. Boom, next thing you know, you got crest active. They don't know what's coming at them. You clean them up with a melee, and now you have an overshield. Simple as that. Getting into the loadout. What loadout am I going to recommend? You can run anything. Anything. But maybe you're bored of the usual Luna's Howl or the Not Forgotten. Yep, that's going to be for you console players out there. Maybe you're bored of those guns. Maybe. Or if you're on PC, maybe you don't want to run the Sparebender loadout. Yes, guys, it's considered a Sparebender loadout. And yes, I mained it for a while. And I still do. So which loadout did I find effective? An effective pairing. Very simple. Prometheus Lens. For those who are new to the channel, I swear by the Prometheus Lens. Why? multiple reasons perfect in-air accuracy low ttk when you land your critical shots and easy to melt enemies from a distance and oh let's not forget when you kill an enemy with the prometheus lens it automatically reloads itself and you can keep fighting so overall what does this mean when i'm utilizing prometheus lens and i'm melting people if i am damaged if i kill two people with prometheus lens and i am damaged i'm able to pop my barricade Get a little void battery bump in there, that little overshield so I don't die. The crest kicks in. I'm able to boost out of my freaking shields and start melting people all over again. So what other pairings go well with the Prometheus lens? Again, you can use whatever you want. But I found two very specific SMGs to go with it. Which is going to be my Atalanta D, which has auto load and holster. Which is great because I like to keep my Atalanta D in my pocket 
and allow auto loading holsters to reload it because I only use my SMG for cleanup kills up close when I need to or when I run out of ammo with the Prometheus lens. Next, I found a lot of viability and I'm probably going to make a video all on its own about my cold front with Vorpal. Yes, Vorpal is top tier and in another video, if you haven't subscribed, do that now. You want to do that, guys. If you haven't subscribed, do that because I will be breaking down why Vorpal is a top tier pick. All that combined is going to make you have a deadly loadout. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this build. I felt like I was surviving more engagements than I should have, especially as a Titan. As a Titan, you don't have those cool mobility movements like a Warlock with its dodge or a Hunter with its, with its little roll dodge. You don't have that. You have to find ways to utilize what you have as a Titan to survive more. I felt like I was able to re-engage more often. I was able to pop my barricade and allow me to get that little health bump from the crest of alpha lupi and then get out of my shield and re-engage i was able to step through my wall clean people up for a few kills go behind my wall and at that same time i'm building more barricade energy overall if you're looking for a top tier build you're looking for a, a survivability build because i know a lot of titans i used to be a titan main i've been maining titan for the past few weeks i could tell you this now the most infuriating thing to happen is when you pop your barricade and you die when you die and your wall goes up. That's the worst. When your wall goes up and you die. Because you lost the wall. And then you died. And you're like, stupid game. Stupid Bungie. I know, guys. I know I know the saying. I know how it goes. Overall, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. To see more builds like this, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel. You're like, Brave, I want to see more stuff like this. Comment down below. I'm going to let the rest of the footage play out. You guys will enjoy it. Pretty much me utilizing this build. Again. If you guys want a top tier Titan build, I never thought I would say, I never thought they would come. I would say the crest of Alpha Lupi is top tier. Guys, it is an awesome exotic. Paired alongside with that Prometheus lens, I might be biased with it, but nonetheless, guys, it gets the job done. You'll see it in the footage. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you in another video.
Your allies the opening. They found glory. 